Islam and the Discoveries of Modern Science Part 6. The Seas. 21 Allah Exalted says. And by the ignited sea, Quran, at Tur, 6. Meaning, the sea ignited by fire, which leads to heating its floor making it extremely hot. For example, the phrase heat up the oven means to ignite it until it becomes extremely hot. The Messenger of Allah are salutations and peace of Allah be upon him, said. Indeed, beneath the sea is a fire, and beneath the fire is a sea. Sanan Abu Dawud and al Haki. In this noble verse, Allah, exalted, swears by one of his magnificent creations, the sea, and describes it as being ignited by fire, hence heating its floor causing it to become extremely hot. The noble prophetic hadith explains that one of the characteristics of this sea is that beneath it is a fire, as he said. Indeed, beneath the sea is a fire, and that beneath this fire is a sea, as he said, and beneath the fire is a sea. Modern science has uncovered the truth of that to which the noble Quran alluded and the prophet hadith informed us. Scientific facts over 1,400 years ago, of which no one had even the slightest knowledge, such that the following were only recently discovered. A. The phenomenon of the spreading of the ocean and sea floors. Causing the eruption of melting rock, soft rock that appears to be melting as a result of high temperature fire through cracks and crevices deep in the ocean and sea floors. Which then leads to an increase in the temperature of the ocean and sea floors, up to more than 1,000 degrees centigrade. This fire then mixes with water at the lowest depths of the ocean and sea floor, which then leads to its ignition and extreme heating. Just as the noble Quran told of in its description of these seas, in his saying and by the ignited sea, likewise, just as the Prophet Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him, spoke of when he said, Indeed, beneath the sea is a fire. b. The presence of a large amount of water beneath the melting rock, soft rock that appears to be melting as a result of high temperature fire, at the weak points of the earth. As the Prophet Muhammad spoke of when he said, and beneath the fire is a sea. This amount of this water is considered many times more than the amount of water on the surface of the earth. So, how precise and eloquent are the expressions of the noble Quran and prophetic hadiths? In their allusion to these amazing scientific facts over 1400 years ago at a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge of them? And what are they an indication of? 22 Allah, exalted, says. Or like the darkness in a vast deep sea, overwhelmed with a great wave topped by a great wave, topped by dark clouds darkness, one above another. If a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. Quran, Honor, 40. Definitions, Vast Deep Sea, Deep Sea. Overwhelmed, overcome and covered by. This noble Quranic verse explains to us that the deeds of the non-believers, those who did not believe in Allah and in his oneness, nor did they follow his prophets and messengers, although they appear to be good deeds, they will not be accepted by Allah, exalted, and they are of no value or benefit to them. Because of their disbelief and lack of faith. Similar to the darkness in the extreme depths of the ocean, as he says, like the darkness in a vast deep sea. which mankind can derive no benefit from, since it is typically light that brings benefit. This noble Quranic verse also describes to us a particular aspect of the sea. That it has two types of waves, as he says, a great wave topped by a great wave. It also describes to us the darkness that is in the depths of the sea. That it is levels of darkness, and that it is absolutely impossible for a person in this darkness in the depths of the sea to see his hand in front of him due to the extreme darkness, as he says. Darkness, one above another, if a man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it.
be in the waves, just above the sea and ocean floors. And that is exactly what the noble Quran informed us of, by his saying, a great wave topped by a great wave. Modern science has also discovered a multitude of differing levels of darkness, as he says, darkness, one above another, such that sunlight is dissolved into different spectra. Most of them completely absorbed at different depths. For example, at a depth of about 200 meters from the ocean's surface there is total darkness, while at a depth of about 1000 meters from the ocean's surface there is gloomy, pitch black darkness. And that is exactly what the noble Quran informed us of, by his saying, darkness, one above another, if man stretches out his hand, he can hardly see it. These scientific facts have only recently been discovered, yet the noble Quran alluded to them over 1400 years ago, at a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge of them. So what is that an indication of? 23 Allah, exalted, says, he has let loose the two seas meeting together. Between them is a barrier which none of them can transgress. Then which of the blessings of your Lord will you both deny? Out of them both come pearl and coral, Quran, or Araman, 19-22. Definitions, he has let loose the two seas. The term let loose indicates a rocking ebb and flow, due to the waves of each of the seas meeting at their meeting point meeting together, the edges of the two seas meet. A barrier, an obstruction which prevents them from blending. None of them can transgress, neither of the two seas crosses over into the other, thereby mixing together. The first two noble Quranic verses speak about one of the signs which indicate the magnificent ability of Allah are exalted. Directing the flow of the seas, and their meeting each other at the designated zones. The two noble verses also inform us that in spite of the fact that these are two salt water seas meeting each other at the designated zones, the two seas referred to here are salt water. As is evident from the noble verse, out of them both come pearl and coral, since coral can be found only in salt water seas, the waters of one still do not mix with that of the other. Due to the existence of a barrier between them. Indeed, it has been discovered that the seas and oceans do actually meet one another at meeting zones. For example, the Mediterranean Sea meets with the Atlantic Ocean, the Red Sea meets with the Indian Ocean. And the oceans as well meet with one another, as he says, he has let loose the two seas meeting together. Indeed, modern science has discovered a difference in the density of sea and ocean water. In the Noble Quran, seas and oceans are classified under the same term seas. Indeed, modern science has discovered a difference in the density of sea and ocean waters, in spite of that fact that they are both made up of salt water. Likewise, the level of salinity in sea waters differs from that of ocean waters. Similarly, the temperatures of the seas and oceans differ, as does the capacity of both to dissolve oxygen. Thus the function of the barrier which prevents the waters of the sea mixing with that of the oceans is to preserve the distinct characteristics of each. Hence, the waters of one do not cross over into the other, altering each one's distinct characteristics, as Allah al exalted says, between them is a barrier which none of them can transgress. 24 There is another type of aquatic barrier that we'll define through the saying of Allah al exalted. And it is he who has let free the two seas, one palatable and sweet, and the other salt and bitter, and he has set a barrier and a complete partition between them. Quran, al Furkan, 53. Definitions, sweet, exceptionally fresh. Bitter, extremely salty. Barrier, an obstruction preventing them from mixing. Complete partition, a blockage which inhibits their mixing. Here, the noble Quranic verse speaks about another type of aquatic barrier, which exists at the meeting point between fresh river waters and salty sea waters. The two waters are prevented from mixing with each other, and at the end of the noble verse, it is confirmed that this barrier is a blockage which completely inhibits the mixing of fresh river water with salty sea water. Indeed, modern science has discovered the existence of another type of aquatic barrier, which lies at the meeting point between fresh river waters and salty sea waters. So in addition to the discovery of the difference in density between fresh river waters and salty sea waters, which works, in addition to other factors, as a barrier coming between the mixing of the two waters with each other, as he, exalted, says, and he has set between them a barrier, Another type of water was discovered at the meeting zones between fresh river waters and salty sea waters. The waters at the mouth of the river 
which is the area where the freshwater river pours into the saltwater sea, like the area where the Nile River pours into the Mediterranean Sea acting as a barrier and blockage inhibiting the mixing of the river and seawaters. Not only that, but it was observed that the water at the mouth of the river has its own distinct qualities different from the extremely fresh river water as well as the extremely salty sea water such that it has its own particular marine life living in it, restricted from moving to both the river water and sea water, due to the differing levels of freshness and saltiness. So it becomes an obstruction and prevention of these creatures exiting into the river or sea waters. These creatures particular to the area of the mouth of the river are cut off from those creatures outside of the area of the river's mouth, as Allah exalted says, complete partition. And Allah spoke the truth when he said, and he has set a barrier and complete partition between them. So, how precise are the expressions of the Noble Quran in their allusion to these amazing scientific facts over 1400 years ago, which no one had even the slightest knowledge of at the time? And what are they an indication of? In the human being, 25 Allah, exalted, says. What is the matter with you that you hope not for reward from Allah? While he has created you in phases, Quran, nu colon 13-14. Definitions, in phases, in different stages. 26 Allah, exalted, says, O mankind, if you are in doubt about the resurrection, then verily. We have created you from dust, then from drops of discharge, then from a clot, then from a little lump of flesh, some formed and some unformed. Quran, Wal Hodge, 5. Definitions, drops of discharge, an insignificant amount of water tat is the cause of male and female reproduction or procreation, like in Allah as saying, mixed drops of discharge, meaning the mixture of male and female discharge. A clot, a hardened piece of blood that clings to the upper part of the womb. A little lump flesh, a piece of flesh meat the size of something chewed. Some formed and some unformed, this piece of flesh has the size and look of something chewed and it's actually two parts. One part in which body parts have been formed, the meaning of Allah as saying, some formed, and another part in which nothing has been formed, the meaning of Allah as saying, some unformed. 27 Allah, exalted, says. And indeed we created man out of an extract of clay. Thereafter we made him as a drops of discharge in a safe lodging. Then we made the drops of discharge into a clot, then we made the clot into a little lump of flesh, then we made out of that little lump of flesh bones, then we clothed the bones with flesh. And then we brought it forth as another creation. So blessed be Allah, the best of creators. Quran, al muminan 12-14. Definitions, an extract of clay, we created Adam, the father of all humankind, from an extracted abstract of clay. drops of discharge, an insignificant amount of water that is the cause for male and female procreation, like in Allah as saying, mixed drops of discharge, meaning, the mixture of male and female discharge. A clot, a hardened piece of blood that clings to the upper part of the womb. A little lump of flesh, a piece of flesh meat the size of something chewed. Twenty-eight Allah, exalted, says, Verily, we have created man from mixed drops of discharge. Quran, Al-Insan, 2. Definitions, mixed drops of discharge, the mixture of male and female discharge. Twenty-nine Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad, a Jew once posed a question to Prophet Muhammad's salutations and peace of Allah be upon him, saying, O Muhammad, from what is a human created? So the Messenger of Allah responded by saying, O Jewish man. A human is created from the union of the discharge of a man and the discharge of a woman. Ahmad, 4424. These noble verses speak about the stages of fetal development, the creation of man, with extreme preciseness and concise expressions, over 1400 years ago. At a time when no one had even the slightest knowledge of these things, and has only recently been discovered in modern times. The first noble verse informs us that Allah, glorified and exalted, created mankind over different stages. This is in contradiction to what the prevalent belief was at that time. People didn't speak about different stages of a human's creation, rather, they used to think that we took on a full or extremely tiny human form from the beginning. Which thereafter grew little by little. Modern science has exposed the futility of this belief, and confirmed the accuracy of that which the Noble Quran informed us. That the creation of mankind is over different stages, as Allah am exalted says, while he has created you in phases. The second and third noble Quranic verses tell us that Allah, exalted, created the first human, Adam, peace be upon him, from dirt after it had become clay. 
Thereafter, they go on to talk about the stages of human development, from the beginning until it becomes a fetus, some of its body parts having been formed. As it is in the third noble Quranic verse, the first of the stages of human development is the drops of discharge, referred to in the singular sense, and not the plural. Defined as an insignificant amount of discharge that is the cause for male and female procreation, like in Allah as saying, mixed drops of discharge, meaning the mixture of male and female discharge. Thereafter is the second stage, the clot, where the drops of discharge become a piece of hardened blood which clings to the upper part of the womb. After that is the third stage, the little lump of flesh, or a piece of flesh the size and look of something chewed. This lump of flesh is actually two parts, a part wherein body parts have been formed, which is the meaning of Allah as saying, some formed. And another part wherein no body parts have been formed, which is the meaning of Allah as saying, some unformed. After establishing what the first verse spoke of regarding the stages of human development the drops of discharge, the clot, the lump of flesh, the third verse explains what comes after that, the stage of bone formation, then that of clothing the bones, then that of another creation. The fourth noble Quranic verse informs us clearly that the discharge from which the human is created is not that of the male only or female only, rather it is from the discharge of them both. The creation of the human being is by the discharge of the male and female together, as is clarified by Allah as saying mixed drops of discharge, meaning the mixture of discharge from a male and a female. This is also clarified in the noble prophetic Hadith, which explains that the human is created from a man and woman's discharge together. Previously and up until the 18th century, it was believed that the human fetus, in extremely minute dimensions, was made up of menstrual blood. However, after the discovery of the ovum, it was believed that a complete human body was formed within the ovum. Then, after the discovery of the sperm, it we believed that a complete human body was formed in the head of the sperm. However, over time, and with the amazing advancement of modern technological methods, modern science has uncovered the futility in all of those claims, while at the same time confirming the truth of those amazing scientific facts that the Noble Quran told of, over 1,400 years ago. After capturing the images of fetal development through the use of modern technology, what modern science has achieved of amazing scientific discoveries can be summed up in the following. 1. Only a very insignificant number of emitted sperms reach the uterine canal, not exceeding 500. Not only that, but only one sperm penetrates the ovum, which in turn becomes the mixed, fertilized discharge consisting of the ovum and the sperm. This is exactly what the third noble Quranic verse informs us of through Allah as saying, mixed drops of discharge, meaning, the mixture of male and female discharge. As well as what is mentioned in the noble prophetic Hadith, a human is created from the union of the discharge of a man and the discharge of a woman. Let us contemplate the saying of Allah, exalted discharge in the three noble Quranic verses, and that it is expressed in the singular and not the plural. This is because only one sperm penetrates the one ovum, which makes up the one mixed discharge. From this, the preciseness of the Noble Qur'an's expressions is illustrated, as well as their implications and the extent of their conformity with what modern science has achieved. 2. After capturing the images of human fetal development through the use of modern technology, it is possible for mankind to see the mixture of discharge, as well as the fetus as a piece of hardened blood clinging to the upper part of the womb, as Allah as says, a clot, as well as the fetus as a piece of flesh or clay placed between the molar teeth until it resembles in this stage something chewed, as Allah as says, a lump of flesh. It can also be seen that this lump of flesh is actually two parts, one in which some of the body parts have been formed, as Allah as says, some formed, and another part in which nothing has been formed, as Allah as says, some unformed. In other words, if we were to describe this lump of flesh as completely formed or completely unformed, that would be an incorrect and unscientific description. The correct scientific description in detail is that which the Noble Quran informed us, as Allah al exalted says, a lump of flesh. Some formed and some not formed. So how precise are the Noble Qur'an's expressions? 
Thereafter, it is also possible for mankind to see the stage of bone formation, as Allah says, then we made out of that little lump of flesh bones. As well as the stage of clothing the bones with flesh, as Allah says, then we clothed the bones with flesh. Likewise, it is also possible to see the other creation stage. Wherein the appearance of the human fetus during this stage differs from its appearance in previous stages, and its human-like appearance is distinct from the fetuses of other creatures, as Allah says. Then we brought it forth as another creation. These are the stages of human fetal development, creation of the human being, in that order. Which the Noble Quran informed us of in extreme preciseness and through a unique depiction using concise expressions. So, how precise and eloquent are the Noble Quran's expressions? And what is indicated from the precedence of Noble Quran and the prophetic Hadiths, in their alluding to these amazing scientific facts over 1400 years ago? Which were discovered only recently and after the advancement of modern technology. Without a doubt, this in its entirely indicates the authenticity of the Noble Quran, and that it is revelation from Allah, exalted, upon his trustworthy Prophet. The seal of all the Prophets and Messengers, Muhammad, salutations and peace of Allah be upon him.